I work for Honeywell. <coughs> My name's not Roger Rebenek, for those of you who know Roger. That's how to get a hold of me if you need to. But the person you should call first is Steve Sackers. Because after you determine that you need a Honeywell part, he's going to tell you whether he has it on his shelf or not. So you call me and I figure out that you need a part. Then you're going to say, you got it? I'm going to say, no, call Steve Sackers. Okay, so that's, that's where we go. But we'll try to help you out as best we can. We're going to be talking today about connected solutions. To us, that is a Wi-Fi stat or a Red Lake stat. How many people have used the Honeywell Wi-Fi or Red Lake and put it on and checked it out? Well, we got one. We, I got four conversions I got to do today. Five conversions, right? All right. The biggest problem that I have with the terminology is Wi-Fi and Red Lake. They're two diabolically opposed words, all right? Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi. You're going to hook it up on a Wi-Fi system wherever you are. Red Link is Red Link. You have to go through a gateway. You got to go through a router, and it's more secure, and it gives you more. And before the day's over, you're going to say he's pro Red Link. You're going to learn that real quick. I might as well just tell you right now, I am a red person. I like Red Link. Right? Right in all the elections, right? If you take a look at what we offer today, here's our Red Links lineup. We have the Prestige, and we have the Vision Pro touchscreen. How many people have used the old touchscreen that we've had out for about eight years, right? Yeah. How many people have used the new touchscreen that we've had out? You know, we've had a new one out since January of 2013, and it costs the same price. So we're trying to figure out why you haven't converted over. That's over almost two years, and you're still using the old stuff. So hopefully today we'll convince you why you should get off the round Murphy bolt thermostat and move up to the new one. Okay. Right. The next thing we have to offer to you is the Wi-Fi. We got the 9000, we got the Vision Pro, and we got the Focus Pro. And our challenge most of the time to dealers who are doing this, they'll come up here and say, "Well, I use the 6000 or the 5000," and our comment is, "Why don't you do Wi-Fi?" Right out of the box. Just give them Wi-Fi. You don't have to hook it up, but it's there. If they want to hook it up, they can hook it up. All right? Wi-Fi connected stats. Here's your Wi-Fi. Not very much there, is it? It's going to tell you you got a high temp and a low temp, and that's it. This is Red Link. Red Link will give you the capabilities of a humidifier, dehumidifier, or ventilator. It's got a discharge air sensor will give you a low discharge air limit when you got ice in the coil. It's got a wireless outdoor sensor. It's got a wireless indoor sensor. It's got a wireless remote control. It can alarm out the discharge air. You can hook up two switches on this. You can alarm out a sump pump, a walk-in cooler. You can walk anything you want in the digital switch. You can alarm out high temp, low temp. You see why I go this way. This offers me more to sell the homeowner. If I sell them a Red Link stack to begin with, I can add this stuff later in life. And I can do it sometimes wirelessly. This is Wi-Fi. You see why I like Red Link. It just gives you more. You take a look at the Wi-Fi, you got the 9000. It's uh, 9320, three heat, two cool. That's what that 32 stands for. How many people knew that? There's a rhyme and reason for our knob. Three heat, two cool. Here's a three heat, two cool. WF stands for Wi-Fi. This one is also three heat, two cool, Wi-Fi. You'll see the red links all have R's in them. It's like Sears and Roebuck Scrabbles. You put the R's with the R's, and then your blue shirt will match your blue pants. All right? If you put a WF with an R, it ain't going to look right. You're going to have orange with pink. It's not going to work. All right? Fair enough? Now, let's talk about the Wi-Fi itself, 9,000. It says here it's good for home or small business. I need to change this slide because I will never, never recommend Wi-Fi to be put on a commercial building that has a bank card meter. Just ask Target, just ask Home Depot, just ask Dairy Queen, and two other pe 200 other people that the Russians in Serbia, right, hack into. So I would never recommend anybody's Wi-Fi system where you have a bank card reader. It's a loose link. When you take a look at Red Link, Red Link is our security guys. 
right? That's where we came from. We protect jewelry stores, we protect furriers, we protect banks, we protect big buildings. We have a team of engineers and IT people to keep the Russians away. Wi-Fi is some guy who puts something in there, hooked it into their internet at their building or their home, and there's no protection whatsoever. It's that simple, okay? That's why I do red link on business. Three heat, two cool, two heat, two cool conventional. It's seven day programmable. It's customized colors. This little screen here, you can make it, you can go to Sherman Williams and match the paint. Now we all sit and laugh, but if you've got some Purdue grad who wants it black and gold, you can make it black and gold for him. It's the ugliest colors on a thermostat I've ever seen. No offense to Purdue grads, but it is ugly, right? There are some other uglier ones out there. If you go out to Seattle and do purple and gold, that doesn't look real good either, you know? Uh, Kentucky blue and white looks good. I hate to tell you that, but that's what comes out of the box. But if you sell residential, most of you are commercial, is that right? Most of you guys are commercial? All right. But if you show it, I always tell the residential guys, if you put it on the wall and say, I can match this pink wallpaper to this screen, and the lady says, oh, I want that. Bingo, you made a sale, didn't you? You walk out. At least at my house, when the wife says I want that, it's, it's a sale, all right? You can do scheduling, you can get local weather, and you can get the two alerts I talked about. You can sell it in Indianapolis, Quebec, Miami, New York, Dallas, San Diego. All right, that's right. You can sell them all in there, right? I'm going to get nailed by these days. You have to have a C wire. It will not, the antenna does not work without a common. The system will work, bring on the heating air without Wi-Fi. But to get Wi-Fi to work, you need a common. All right? It's got indoor humidity sensing. That's the 9,000. Now, the biggest hurdle we have with everybody is, I don't know how to set up the Wi-Fi. And that's poppycock. All right? Let's, let's look at it. How many people have an iPad, an Android, a smartphone? How many people go to your settings, you go to Wi-Fi, you see all the list of all the Wi-Fi's like I just did here, and I picked Jackson, you right? And I, I, I said, this is the one I want, and then I said connect, right? We do it every day. We're gonna do the same thing with the thermostat. We're gonna say yes, after we program it all, it's gonna say, do you wanna do this? We're gonna say yes. Is that blurry or is it B? Thank you. See, I focused it when I had my glasses on. How's that? You gotta tell me this stuff, guys. I'm old and blind. All right? It's gotta go out and search, just like you do when you do your iPhone and say, well, I wanna know the Wi Fi. I wanna make a hotspot, right? And then it comes up and says, here's your home network. You hit that. You let the homeowner put in their password. It goes out and looks for the thing and it connects to it, and then it says you're connected. It's that simple. And the biggest hurdle we have with all the dealers in the world, oh, I don't know, I'll get my 13 year old to do it for me. You do it every day, every day. So don't be scared of it. The next thing you do, you gotta register this thing on a, an account called Total Cover. And we're gonna go there in a second and do it. Here's the two magic numbers you're gonna need to know. They put them on the screen for you. If you don't write them down and you forget them, you rip it off the wall and look on the back. That's where the back number is, okay? It's real easy. That's so unprofessional. To rip something off the wall and put it back on again, right? And then we register for the remote. So that's the 9,000 Wi-Fi. The next Wi-Fi's we have are the 8,000 and the 6,000. Now this is something new. The 6,000 used to only be a five and two, or five, one and one. As soon as you go Wi-Fi, it's seven day programmable. But I wouldn't use it on small business. You can control it from an iPhone or Android. Three heat, two cool, two heat, two cool. Auto changeover. Don't mess with auto changeover, right? You can do that. And adaptive intelligent recovery. How many people know what that is? One. You should, two. Anytime you get a question, do you want adaptive intelligent recovery? You say yes. You never say no. Here's adaptive intelligent recovery. It is uh, 10 o'clock at night. You got a setback coming. You're gonna now have a new 60 degrees as your set point. 
That means if your building or house or whatever gets to 60 degrees, we're going to turn on the heat, right? That's what this means. We draw a line. 7 o'clock, we want 70 degrees. We draw a line just like that. As soon as you put in a time and temp, we draw a line. you got a well-insulated place. Maybe you lose a degree. So you're cruising over here, just lost a degree, the heat never comes out, heat never comes out. Right here at 5.30 in the morning, it hits this line, I turn on the heat to be at seven degrees at 7 a.m. You got a building that leaks like a sieve. The damper's still open. They never had the economizer or close the outside the air damper. You're sucking in 20 degrees of air all night, right? It's cold, that building. Here's your temperature here. It hits the line here at 1 o'clock. I bring on the heat. That's adaptive intelligent recovery. Your other option is comfort. Here's comfort. 7 o'clock. Bring it on. Let's get to 70. Which one do you want? You got it. No questions asked, is there? No questions asked. Okay. By the way, we've had that for years. Long time. Long, 20 years. You used to work for Honeywell then. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I like to tease you. You got to have a hard wire common or it doesn't run the uh, uh, antenna. You can't do armchair programming anymore. You got to have 24 volts. The old ones used to be able to sit down and go, doo -doo 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 -doo. Right? can't do that anymore. Now, if you run into a job where the guy 30 years ago put a round thermostat on the wall and then took a staple gun and stapled all the wires to the studs. Never been there before, have you? And you can't pull another wire. Here is a part number that will take any four wire thermostat to a five wire thermostat. Okay? This part number right here. We call it a wire saver. And that gets you out of doing a lot of stuff. If you have to use Wi Fi. Everybody got that? I see some writing, so I'll wait a second. And that's the best kept secret in the world. We've had it out for three years. This is the most important is for Bob to get it, to get it inventory. <coughs> right? Okay, let's talk about the Vision Pro only. The Vision Pro only is the only Wi-Fi I offer that does dual fuel. And you have to hardwire this outdoor sensor to the subbase. If you don't, and we're going to talk about upstage timer group and uh, balance point in a, in a little while. If you don't have, have dual fuel and you want a sensor in the room in the stack someplace else, you run this sensor to the subbase and it's two wires. Okay? So you have either R, you cannot have both. You can also average this temperature and you can go in there and do series parallel wiring and you can do square root numbers and they're all black wires and good luck. You ever notice that? They're all black wires when you got who the hell am I supposed to do all this stuff? Alright? So there it is. That's what that's all about. Equipment reminders. You can get filter change reminders, humidifier change reminders, and UV lamp reminders. Vacation home, this is a residential stat. If you use the 8000 Red Link, it's commercial. It doesn't have vacation when you say commercial. It has holidays. All right, so that's another reason why you should be going over to the Red Link on your commercial stuff. And we did all that, okay? So the vacation. Now, here's the same thing. It's going to go in there if you get it all set up. It says Wi-Fi set up, and you're going to say, yes, I want to do that. And then it's going to go out and look all over the place, just like your other one did, and they're going to find a homeowner's site. You're going to hook the homeowner's site. They're going to put your password in. It's going to go out and look. It's going to say, I'm searching Wi-Fi set up, and then it's finally going to say, connected. And then you're going to have your back ID and your CRC number you need to get it so you can see it on the internet. Same difference. It's going to ask you for those two numbers. You plug it in, it's going to come in. Now, here's an OJT tip I got for you. I had seven Wi-Fi stats in one building. I told the dealer, ah, oh, man, no problem. Oh, man, I really need your help. Oh, come on. Okay, so he taught me going to the job, right? So we had all seven of them there. We had the owner with his iPad there. 
And he's doing exactly what I told him, and nothing happens. Not a damn thing. I'm going, holy shit, this is embarrassing. So I call the hotline. And they said, do you have all of them on the wall with 24 votes to them? I said, yeah, we're ready to rock. He says, take seven, six of them off. Oh, I take six of them off. Automatically right here, it finds the one thermostat that's powered and goes through the whole setup. But I said, thank you very much. And then we did one at a time. Okay? So when you're doing Wi-Fi in a building and you want to hook the thermostats up to the Wi-Fi system, don't put them all on the wall one time. Put them on and then power them up, put the next one on, power it up, and it'll work a lot better. You will be embarrassed like I was, all right? All right, now you got to create an account. I hope I can get in here. We've been having problems with this account. This is an account called MyTotalComfort.com, right here. The first thing you got to know about this thing, it's free. I love that word, don't you? It's free. The next thing I'm going to tell you is the monthly fee is nothing. Free and nothing. What more could you ask for? Right? So, let's go here. We'll go into the internet real quick and see if I can't pull this up. I know I'm on your site. All right? Jackson Guess. Yeah, there we are. Okay. I'm going to go down to my favorites. Yesterday I had problems with it, so I'll tell you that up front. We're having the IT boys, you know, they always they always make it better for you. You ever notice that? We it made it worse. It worse yeah, better. it's like, who asked you to make it better? I kind of like the old one, you know? I knew how to get around that screen. Okay, here's mytotalconnectcomfort.com. That's where we got to go. Is it going? There it is. This is where you need a good joke. Now, it's not going to let me do it here. But I can show you how to log in. Here's what the homeowner's going to get when they are the building owner. Whoever, let's talk building owner. This is what they're going to get, all right? They, what they're going to do is they're going to come down here and say create an account. After you read all this speed reading from Evelyn Woods, because everyone reads all the attorney, right? You read that, you're going to Hilton Garden. You accept all these terms and conditions. Hell, you don't even know what they are. You just say accept it. Let me get on the internet, all right? So what you're going to do now is you're going to put in an email address, so you're going to put in the person's email that's going to get the email that has that little bar, blue bar that he clicks on to get back here, and we're going to say, congratulations, you have an account. All right? So what's going to happen is, is he's going to say, he's going to put his email or her password. They're going to tell us who they are. They're going to tell us what their mother's name, name was, where they met their wife, what was your high school mascot, you know, whatever three you pick. All right? <laughs> you too. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then two years later, when they ask you again, you forget, what the hell? What did I say? You know, because our mascot's the Tigers. And I, did I say Tiger or Tigers? Or I met the wife at the Hunter's Hideaway Bar. Did I put Hunter's Hideaway or Hunter's or the bar? You know, oh, God help me. But anyway, so then I'm not going to do it. You say submit. It goes to Minnesota. Minnesota gets it. It sends an email back to the person who's in this little register right here. And then what they do, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get in there. We're going to go back one or two here. Come on, did it lock up? No, I went too far. Okay, my total effect. <coughs> What's going to happen is, is they're going to get to that site, they're going to put in their password and their username, they're going to log in, then it's going to say add a site or add a location. They click on add a location. I'm not, I can't log in. This is the page you'll get. And when they log in, it's going to say add a location. When you add a location, that's when all these Wi-Fi's one at a time will start showing up when you put the MAC ID and the CRC number in. Okay? When you use Red Lake, we use a gateway. And on the gateway, you can put four thermostats. So what will come up is the gateway, and then you'll have your four thermostats on the gateway. So what you can have, and you should all have this, let me get this up real quick, I'll show you a site that's a demo. I've got four of mine. Yeah. Yeah. You got yours up? It's easy, isn't it? Oh yeah. Boy, the gray here say it's easy. Your guys are in trouble. Right? I got my new video alarm sent to you. I haven't changed it. 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 I haven't
You got four and one gateway, you say? Yes. Let's, let's get this up. I should do apologize for this. You know, for being wireless, I have more damn wires to plug into the wall more than I ever no, done in my life. Or is it just me? Okay, where do I want to plug in? We'll get you there. What he has there, he has his. I'm going to take you to, and it's funny because there's a guy in Indianapolis who's selling a lot of connected thermostats. And I said, how are you doing this? And he has your demo, right? right. By the way, that's the thermostat I have on my wall. It's, uh, it's programmable, made in 1934. It works. It'll set your heat back. Bring your cool up. No adaptive. No, no, no adaptive on that one. All right, but let's go right here. Here is, see I'm pointing here thinking you can see this. We're gonna hit that number 72. We're gonna say no. You can go to your app store, you go to Honeywell, you pull up that 72 and here's what you're gonna get. You have a demo, this is, these are all demos. So as you can see, I got a downtown store, my home, summer house, uptown store. These are all the different locations I have on this one account. I currently have a <coughs> restaurant person in Indianapolis, Steak and Shake, have 34 stores on one account. Okay? He wants to know Kansas, he can find Kansas. He wants to find a one in Manhattan, he can find a one in Manhattan, he can find the temperatures. Fair enough, so I mean, how many you want to put on there? Knock yourself out. Take as all as you want. So let's go to uh, my summer house. There's a the summer house. There's so we've got more than one thermostat. No, we oh, somebody put it to centigrade. Look at that son of a gun. Some Canadian was playing with this. We should turn on the heat, okay? And you say submit, the heat will come on. You can turn it off. You can turn the fan on. You can turn it auto. You can take do the whole nine yards, okay? This is what your building management guy can do. He can get in there and change schedules. Here's your menu. Uh, yes, I want to leave that. He wants to change the schedule of the store. They're going to open late because it's Friday on Christmas time, and now he wants to change the schedule so they're open to 12 instead of going at 8. Here's where you can go in, change the schedule. All right. Now, this is not like the big DDC stuff, Jackson Cells on the other side, where you can hit one button and do 14 thermostat. You got to do one at a time. Then again, it doesn't cost $20,000 either. So what do you want? This is the low end energy management that they can get on the internet and talk to. Fair enough? So we're going to say done. There's my dehumidification. You want to change it? Let's move the wire. How about them apples? Okay. There's your contractor information. This is where you can put your name, rank, and serial number. So anytime an alert comes up or something that comes up and says, who's the dealer, your name pops up get them to call you okay so we're going to do cancel uh, if you want to know what the temperature is going to be here in, in centigrade wherever we are on Thursday it's going to be a 10 degree high was that somewhere around 40 give or take a degree All right okay so that's what this website will give you that's what this website gives your building management person that's what this website gives you. When you go in there and log in and set up your account, when he sets up the account as a location, there's six blank lines for emails. These are the six people that can get emails. Of course, the facility manager should be one, and you being the heating and air guy might want to be the next one. So that when the discharge air temperature trips at 45, he gets it, you get it, you're talking, yeah, I can be out there in four hours after the ice melts. Make sense? Yeah. That's what you can do here. All right, we'll sign out. And what, there's the demo mode right there. You can see demo to the bottom left. And uh, I wonder if I can get into my place. Let's see. You are currently connected to, not connected to the internet. Let me just see if I can get into my house. This is sick. or do I need your password again? See now, here's how you do it. You go to the Wi-Fi, right? That's how you hook up Wi-Fi. Jackson Classroom Guests. Yeah, we're guessing, all right. 
this is how hard it is to hook a thermostat and Wi-Fi, like that, just like I'm doing this. But everybody says, oh, it's so hard, I can't do it. You look at them like, yeah, I used to say that. I used to not like broccoli either, too. We're not going to get there. We'll do it later. I'll let this get together and then we'll keep going. We'll, we'll, we'll show you later. We'll go to my wife's house. And it does say Judy's house. We'll go to the wife's house and I'll show you what she's doing today. And the funniest thing was the guy said, uh, Hey, that's your wife's house. Let's play with the temperature. Let's lower it down real low so she can't get on the heat. And I said, You know, I've been married 37 years. That's the dumbest idea I've had in 37 years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like you that stupid that you're gonna go mess around with your wife, you're definitely nuts. Not only will your dinner be lousy, she'll get half your money. Okay, I'm right there. Right. Big time. So we're gonna blow through all these slides because that's what we just did live. Okay? Any questions on the Wi-Fi or what you can do with it? That's also how you hook up the Red Link Gateway. That site. Where the owner gets an individual set up for a site on the Total Comfort yes. website, they leave, but they just have to set up a new account and have the owner deleted. Is that the right way to do that? Okay, wait. Okay, I got the owner to do what? I'm the the owner's facilities guide. Okay, yeah. So he's no longer valid. Of course, he knows the information on There the is account. an edit, and you we can take people name. off. You can change it on that account. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the other thing that we can do, too, uh, that what we're doing out here at Steak and Shake, uh, you can allow, if so many people, if I can get into my home, you can allow people to come in and look. So you're the facility manager, but I can let Jerry here, who has these six stores, I can have him permission to go into those six stores and do stuff. And you are in New England, and I'll have you do the seven stores in New England. Jerry's going to do India, you're going to do New England, and you two are going to cross. And you can change those names anytime you want to. Okay. Thank you. Good question. All right. This is the Vision Pro. The ones that you haven't used yet. Can't believe it. Totally universal. And it is. It's easier and faster installation. Light commercial. <coughs> the first question when we go in to start programming these things, the first question they ask, they say, is this commercial or residential? As soon as you do commercial, you got occupied and unoccupied. You got an economizer output. You want to do four stages of cooling, do four stages of cooling. You want to do hot gas bypass dehumidification, do hot gas bypass dehumidification. You want to do reheat dehumidification, do reheat dehumidification. It is a commercial thermostat. Instead of vacation, it has holidays. You can literally go in there today put the Friday after Thanksgiving and say I want it to be 70 degrees at 7 a.m. So that when that guy opens, no, excuse me, 70 degrees at 2 a.m. So when that guy opens the door at 155 for all those people freezing all night long for a 5% off on a TV, the building will be 70 degrees. How many people do Black Friday? Anyone here? Oh my lord. Oh my lord. I, I knew worse than that. When my 13-year-old came up, he's the baby, and said, I don't believe in Santa Claus, the wife, and I said, neither do we. We, we. we quit Christmas. We totally 100% quit Christmas, and we go on trips. And there's no presents, there's no trees, there's no lights, there's no cards, there's nothing. And that's why I look so young, because I don't have the stress of Christmas. Think about it. you. <laughs> Huh? I want to be you. There you go. There you go. Generate repeat business. On this thing, there are 10 slots where you can put a message. You can put 10 billboards out there. One of them could be something as simple on April the 15th or April the 10th. Every year it can come up, call for your spring cleaning check appointment. Every fall or August. 29th, call for your fall cleaning check. They're calling you. How much does it call to get a customer to call you? Four or five hundred dollars when you really start adding it up? This you got a billboard that you can have them say, hey, call me. 
If they didn't hook up to the internet, you could have a little message on there that says, this stack can be hooked to the internet. Are you interested? Call me. Get that call me. Uh, the Hampton Inn, you ever go to Hampton Inn, the little girl on the phone with the wire? Call me. Okay. What else you want to enunciate? Anything there? Say you put a whole uh, a dehumidifier system in, and the warranty's up in five years. You can go out four years, 10 months, and say your warranty's up in 60 days on the dehumidifier. Call me. See that keyword, call me? It is. That's what you want to do. You got 10 of those. Then you get the red link accessories. It's universal. If you take a look at that little white board there, you'll see that there's a bunch of red wires on it, right? It wires directly to the equipment, just like you would a T87F, a T7300. Let's use that one. Boy, that's a, there's a word that's been there for a long time, huh? T7300. The next option you have is to use the Hampton Inn. two wires. You take the white sub base, you put two wires on it. And then you have the gray equipment interface module on your right hand side. And we said they wire the signal to that gray interface module and we control the heating and air. How about them apples? Or I can take no wires, put batteries in the thermostat, go to the equipment interface module and it's wireless. Totally 100% wireless. How many jobs do you have? Never stand on the wall that says do not touch. I know you do. I've been in those restaurants. Do not touch. And you haven't moved it because you can't get two wires over there. You move the thermostat someplace over here to run the seven wires up to the rooftop, right? Now with this red link, this goes in the rooftop, this goes in the manager's office, and you got a wireless indoor sensor here. But you don't take the other thermostat down and says, do not touch it, leave that right there. Right? Is it just me that do it? Is that right? <laughs> Play with it all you want, do it, do it, do it, thing. <laughs> but if it gives you comfort, that's all it's about, right? And then we have wireless. Now here's the big thing, that another job trading trick I want to show you that I learned. We have this little board here. This little board is normally used use with a zoning board. I make two zoning boards, a three zone and a four zone, that this hooks up ABCD to ABCD, and then I can receive a wireless signal from Edley Red Lake Thermostat for zoning. And I'll bring on the dampers, I'll bring on the heating and air. The job I had was a Rural King. We switched a Walmart to a Rural King. I had 13 wireless sensors on the post. So this is a big story, right? I had the thermostats in the second floor mezzanine. And I had an equipment interface module in the equipment. And I couldn't get them to talk. Another embarrassing moment. I have many of them in my lifetime. Right? So I'm sitting here and I talked to Minnesota and I said, what can we do? He says, take the equipment interface module and drop it below the roof line. We had a steel roof. Steel. Steel is the key word here. So he said, just drop that interface module below the roof. I said, that's a great idea. How long have you been with Honeywell? He says, two years. I said, great. If you're here two years from now and I gotta troubleshoot that, will you hold my ankles while I hang upside down and put a meter on it? <laughs> and of course, that idea didn't go too well, did it? I said, I don't think that's that good of an idea. All right, I might not be here two years, but you are. Right? <coughs> so what we learned was this also works with this. So now I can drop this below the roof line, the steel roof, before I can get it out of the box, right? The steel. I can put it down there. That receives a signal. It's only four wires to where I have the equipment interface module. It's been working great for 22 months. It solved the problem. So my statement is, if you have a steel roof, if you're going to put it in equipment on a rooftop and it's all steel, right, get one of those. It's better to have it in the job and not need it than not have it in the job because I don't give it away free. Fair enough? And if they cost 40 bucks, it's nothing to get her done, right? Okay. Installation is easy. You use plain English. For those of you who use my old touch screen, it's 120, 6, 240, 
four. Anybody done that? Anybody done that on the phone because you lost a sheet, you had to call the office, have them get the snakes on the phone, right? Yeah, I hear you. This ask you question, is it a heat pump or is it conventional? Is it geothermal? Is it dual fuel? Is it one stage or two stage? There are no more one, two, three, four and stuff. That's, that's God. You got a quick install. We have a little micro SID card that you can put in the bottom of this thing. So once you program it once for what you have, you can download it and it's gonna say name that file. Just like save this letter, How do you, what do you wanna name it, what file? So that's the same thing this is gonna ask you on the thermostat and you type in what you call it. So one heat, one cool, conventional. Three heat, two cool, heat pump. Two heat, two cool, commercial. You digging it? Four cool, commercial. Two heat, two cool, commercial with dehumidification. How many can you put on the card? How big's the card? You might end up with 20 different uh, setups. So that when you go to the next job, you put it in the bottom, you find a setup that matches closely, and say go, and it uploads in five seconds. That's the way to do it, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay? Your dealer information is on the screen. You can put it there, name, rank, and serial number, website, four line. You get four lines of 26 lines, 26 letters. Frank, Wilkerson, and Sons fit. We tried it. Here's your spring and fall warranty. When do you want to replace filters? The whole nine yards, all right? On uh, my reminder, it just came up last week, and it says, call the irrigation guy, drain the pipes. Has nothing to do with heating and air, but now I whoop freeze my pipes outside when the winter comes because I have had replaced a few pumps, not pumps with valves. The guy put it on the north side of the house. Why did he put it in the south? The sun was. Must have been a little bit. If you ever put an irrigation system in, put the valve on the south side of the house because that way the winter sun beats on it instead of the no sun and cold from the north freezes it. Because you should drain it. Simple answer questions, intuitive interface, and help screens. We're going to go through the help screens. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to have fun by <coughs> taking you to this website and show you where you can find stuff. This is forward thinking not Honeywell How many people have ever been there? Forwardthinking.honeywell.com. Okay, it's heating season right now, right? So let's go here to combustion. You're in a no heat call and all of a sudden you run across this valve. And you got a valve and you want to know, oh gosh, I need a new gas valve. But this thing's 15 years old, what do I need? Here I am under gas valves, right over here, cross reference, look at that. I'm going to click on the cross reference. It's going to load up. Boy, this is a slow internet. Oh, man. Anybody know a good joke? This man and a woman were took their 15 year hunt reunion, right? Wedding reunion. Oh, here we go. I'll come back to it. All right, so here's what we go. Watch this. Let's scroll down here a little. We still going? No. Oh, it's taking too long. Come on. Are we still going here? Yeah, we are. How many more we got? You think? Yeah, I think right. Okay, you got, a, you got a gas valve. What gas valve do you have? Here you go. There's a Honeywell's. Oh, I got a Robert Shaw BH. I'm right here. BH. Let's do this. I got a BH 7000-417. That's a BR 8000AM4406. Isn't that good for the dispatcher to know how to do this? So when you call in and, and the dispatch and say, hey, I got this valve, he says, hey, here's the one you need. Yeah, it makes life a little easier. If you want to know if there's a part available for something, I go to the spec sheet. When I go to the spec sheet, that's where I find out if there's a part, what the part number is under accessories. Uh, here, under here is training. We have a Tuesday, every Tuesday we have a half an hour training thing. We tape it. That's where you can find all the tapes because I know you on Tuesdays you're working someplace and you don't have time to sit in the Starbucks 
and listen to a tape on gas valves or ignition boards or thermostats. So this is where you can go and learn more about them, okay? Uh, let's go to thermostats, that's where we want to go. Scroll down here, and I want to show you this. Click for details. See right here, the <coughs> thermostats, first thing you see, click for details. And then you come <coughs> over, let's go green bar. We're going to scroll down, see this word product customization. You click there, you say customization, you click there. Let's say continue. Now eventually, I'm supposed to get to a, there it is. It's going to give me a picture of the two thermostats. This is the Prestige. This is the Vision Pro. Look at here. Dealer information. Dealer information. Okay? Now, the difference between these two things on dealer information, when you go into here and say dealer information, you can put a picture there. You will put your logo on that screen when it comes up your dealer's name. You can do it. This is where you just click there, you go into your browser, just like you do anytime it is, you find a picture of the logo that you want, you post it up there, and bang, when it cuts out your name, rank, and serial number, right? It also has your logo there. Or a picture of a kitty cat if you think that's going to get business. I don't know, you know. But you can put your picture there. You cannot put a picture on this one. The only thing that you can do on this one is put your name, rank, and serial number. Are we going? Yeah. Come on. trying to figure out how many boring classes she just had to sit through just to tape stuff. But anyway, yeah, she has no idea what HVAC was until she got here. Here's where you type in your 40 characters, excuse me. Here's where you type in your name, rank, and serial number. You then download it to the zip drive so that when you want to put your name, rank, and serial number on this thermostat right here, you put the zip drive in the bottom and you upload it. Or you can stand there for 15 minutes in front of the thermostat and try to type it out. Good luck with that one. We'll show you how it works if you're going to go, where's the zip drive? I'll guarantee you you're going to say, where's the zip drive, okay? No questions asked. So that's the website. This is one of the most important websites that I got. And uh, let's go here. You don't, you don't need access to that one? No. No password, thank the Lord. Okay. I'm going to get out of here and go back in. Never, okay, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. I want to go to... I want to get a customization. I want the thermostats again. Here's another most important thing in life. We're going to talk about the Vision Pro, right? There's two things I want to show you here. First of all, I can come over here to the install. That says install. Here. Let's do this. There. Can you see that better? Install. I'm going to click install. Then here's product data book. I'm going to click on product data book, and then all of a sudden, we are going to show up and we are going to find a 167 page book that has all the answers. You do not get this in the box when you get the thermostat. The box would be too big. All right? But here it is. That's how you get this. Right here. This is how. You come to me and say, hey, I got a geothermal system, right? <coughs> and my first stage is radiant heat. On page 1, 22, it shows me where to hook up my first stage radiant heat on U1. It's got footnotes, and it shows me how to hook up the rest of the geothermal. Okay? If you want to know about dehumidification, we go to about page 86, I think it is, and it talks all about commercial dehumidification, what you can and can't do. This is a Bible. Did we order any of these in for these guys? We should have. So we're going to do this. We're going to show you another trick here. So that's how you find literature and stuff. Oh, I went the wrong thing. The other thing that you can do off of forward thinking. It's all that. Come on. So this guy and his wife were at this dance, right? They, they went out to eat. Oh, here we go. See, it works. You think this is bad? I used to teach Flame Safeguard, all right? And that little timer on that big burner board was 120 seconds, and you couldn't change it. You went, you went dead time. Two minutes of open. Anyway, let's get this down so we can see it on the screen. 
there that a little better. Okay, oh yeah, here's what I was gonna show you. Right here, this is literature. You click on literature, right? And it's gonna come up and it says, do you have a username, which you don't, Bob does, back in the back, right? If you're already registered, you click there to order literature. If you're not, you register. You're an ECC distributor, contractor, manufacturer's rep. When you go do this back at your shop, as soon as you say go, and we say you got an account within seconds, you have a thousand dollars to spend on literature. So if you want a piece of literature to hand to the building owner that has something to do with what you're selling on Honeywell, that's where you can get it. Thousand bucks a year. That's how you sign up for it. Okay. We got to get that. Our annuals $9.95. Yeah, $9.95. <laughs> the manual's not cheap. All right, so let's do this. Here's the other thing, the real reason why I came here, I want to show you this. We're going to go to thermostats, and we're going to get into programming this thing. All right, we're going to go down to, where am I? Look at this, I can't see where I am. Oh, all the way there, yeah, this way. Here I am, Vision Pro. I'm going to go over here to in, not install, yes. Uh, which one is it? I think it's train. Train. There's an interactive demo. I'm going to click on interactive demo. I'm going to say open. It's going to run for a little while and it's going to give me another screen. I'm going to say yes. Then it's going to give me another screen. I'm going to say go. Should I try my joke one more time? It'll be right here. So they go out to eat. 15 year wedding anniversary. Never fails. I'm going to get that joke. Again. I'm going to click here. And here's this guy to dance floor. It's the guy to eat me about dancing. The guy to dance for another couple. He's just dancing all over the place. I mean, he's cutting a rug, doing everything possible, just taking everything up. And a woman turns to her husband and says, see that guy over there? He asked me to marry you before you did, and I declined him. The husband turned to her and says, I see he's still celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Ouch, right? If you look at that thermostat that you have in front of you, you're right there at this screen, aren't you? You see where I took you? So if you go back to the shop and you want to show other folks how to do this, or you want to practice programming, hello, <coughs> here you are. And we're going to go through it. Now, I'm not going, I saved mine to the hard drive, so I'm not going to use this because what happens is if I keep talking, all of a sudden the internet says, Tommy, got to start again. And then I got to go back and do everything all over again. So we're going to get out of here, out of here. Out of here, we're going to go right down to here, and we're going to go where I have it. Here, here it is for the prestige. If you want to do a prestige, there it is. It's in English, it's in residential, it's in commercial. You're programming a thermostat, okay? You can play with it, practice it, teach you guys at the shop how to do it. But we're going to do this one first Vision Pro. Excuse me, Vision Pro. There we are. Okay, everybody, pick up a thermostat. It's a pairs or whatever. What do you want to do? Here we are. We got application. You guys are mostly commercial. Flip it to commercial. Are you there? Down, up or down arrows. Make it commercial. Then say next. You can name this thermostat. If you touch it and say name it, they're going to come up with a keyboard, right? And then you can name this thermostat anything you want. Now you're going to see how difficult it is to name the thermostat or use the keyboards. It's not that easy. But if you have two or three thermostats in a building, this could be East Dining Room. This could be Bar. Yeah, you can, you can name it what you want, and that way when you go on the website, you know which one you're talking to. Okay, is that fair enough? You, but it is, you, you select it from the list. Uh, you said residential, didn't you? Not no. Oh, you got a list? Oh, you can select it from the list. Yeah, you don't. But these, I thought you could type on these. Maybe it's the prestige you could, here, age you want. You can select it from the list. So we can make it all this age you want. Is the system zoned? No. Is this, everybody there yet? We're at T-Stack controls and equipment module. Zone is no. Now, if you say yes there, do not say yes. Do not say yes. 
If you say yes there, what you're saying is that you have one of these gray boxes someplace. And once you say yes, we're going to do that the next exercise, that's when you've got to hit buttons on the gray box to link up the stat to the gray box. Okay? But we're going to say no the first time. We're going to hardwire this thing, just like we hardwired. Okay? Red link accessories, we're going to say no. Press next to begin installer and setup. Is this easier than 101's a three? Yes. Oh yeah. And you haven't bought it yet. It's two years. It's good stat. Yeah. Okay, you want it programmable or non-programmable? I don't care. It's your stat, your building, your building on it. You want it Fahrenheit or Canadian? I don't care. <clears throat> Outdoor sensor. If you say yes, we're going to be wiring that to S1. But I'm gonna, let's go back and say no. We'll do the uh, wireless accessories. We can do the wireless accessory then. We can either hardwire an outdoor sensor to S1, or we could use a wireless outdoor sensor. We're well, going we to have to say yes. Yes, wireless yes, accessories. yes, yes. But we're going to do that next time. We're going to show you how to do that. Because I, what I'm doing, I'm gonna, I don't want it on there. Because after you get it all wired up and going, I'm going to show you how to add it later in life. That's why I'm not having you do it now. I want you to make sure you know how you to notice, do it. notice, there are the codes if you need to oh, yeah. reference to the right. manual. Yeah, this is 106. If you go right here, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Here, 106. Somewhere in here is a 106. 130, 110. So it's handy to have that manual because if you're out there and sometimes you don't understand the selection that you're being asked to make, you know, what, what does this do versus that, then reference that code. Okay, we're going to... That's correct. All right, next. After our sensor, let's do forced air, okay? Next. How many stages you want of cooling and heating? One or two? I don't care. What do you want? Four. One. You got it. Oh, go three. Look at that. What's he sound? No? Okay. Let's go two if they have a heat pump. Well, we did. We had, we had conventional. We'll do right. heat pump next. Okay. Heat stages, will you keep that at one? Yep. Okay. Do you have a fan on limit, or do you want the equipment, the thermostat to turn on the fan? That's what that question is. All right, the equipment controls the fan, and he's going to say the stack controls the fan. You got a fan on limit, you're going to say the other way. Right, it's your equipment. I don't care. Do you have ALA terminal? Do you have an economizer? Do you have time of day or none? So now you have, we. You don't have this on residential, now you have an economizer output. The economizer output is what you hook the motor to, right? So that when it is cold outside and nobody's in the building, you close the outside air damper because it's spring return closed. You de-energize 24 volts off that motor and you keep the cold air out. Why are you leaving it open in the middle of the night? You don't need it. You only need fresh air when there's somebody in the building, right? All right. So if you don't have that, what if you have lights that you want to turn on and off? Then you got time of day. So whenever you say go to unoccupied, something else is going to happen. That's going to switch, and whatever you got hooked to those terminals is going to go. That's a good place to control just a, like a, on a small split system with a six inch outside air damper, two position, tight right to that tight as time of day. Okay, watch. Watch what I did here, because we're going to forget this after he leaves this room, so we're going to hit L. The LA terminal can be set to operate in different ways as described below. The terminal is not used, is energized during occupied period when the user overrides the temperature. Terminals are de-energized during unoccupied and standby. Economizer terminals control the economizer to provide ventilation during the occupied and free cooling when the outdoor conditions are favorable. Heat pump fault, the thermostat displays a message to alert the user when the heat pump requires service. So if you wired something from your heat pump into there, we're gonna have a little red light come on and we're gonna go to the internet and say, call me. That's good stuff. It is good stuff. But you see the help screen? So when you guys forget what the hell they did. All right, I don't care what you put there. Just put auto changeover. Of course you want auto changeover, right? It's a commercial building. There's your dead fan. Everybody understands dead fan. It's three degrees, you got 70 heat. The maximum cooling you get is 73. 
right? Now, for you old timers, that's the over here to your left, my right, <laughs> you will remember when we used to take it and you'd lower the heat set point, right? And all of a sudden, stop dead. You couldn't go any place. And you had to get out of the heat mode, go into cool mode, lower the cool set point. Been there, haven't you? And you go back in the cool set point, lower. You never had to do that. He had to. All right. The new thermostats, when you start lowering the cool set point, you have three degrees. We keep it three degrees. We lower the set points and raise the set points. You do not have to go from heat to cool to cool to heat to get your set points changed anymore. We have a hallelujah on that one. I mean, that was a pain. That was a pain. All right. We're going to go. You can do basic or advanced. We're going to do basic. Do not touch the cycle rates. I paid an engineer a lot of money to figure these out. If you have problems, call us. All right. Compressor, minimum times. It's not additive. If you have something on your equipment that has a five minute Lock out when you de-energize Y1, you get five minutes, you don't get 10, all right? So it all depends if you have it, whether you need it. You can put none there if you want to, if your equipment already has it, or you can put two in there and be a NASA rocket ship, right? All right, if you have your fan on auto, this is where you can say, I want it to run for 60 seconds after I de-energize Y1, because you paid to get that cold air. Put it in the space, don't leave it in the top, right? And the same with the heat, except in this place you can't get cool air in any place because they didn't want that. To... But what, what is this with it? locking this out? There's your 60 seconds. Yeah. Four, it's a commercial building, you're only going to have two times a day, right? Preoccupied purge. So what we're saying is if you want to, you can, if you have an occupied time, and you have that economizer motor hooked up, you can say, I want you to open that damper an hour before opening the purge it open. You can do that if you want to. I don't care. It's something that can be done. I'm going to put no off. Next. Type of override is standard. Initiate occupied standard. Let's see what that means. I haven't done a commercial in a long time. Standard. The system maintains temperatures programmed for the occupied and unoccupied time periods. Pressing override will allow you to take a temporary schedule change. Initiate occupy. The system maintains temperature at the energy savings level until the lever is pressed. Start occupancy. Any questions on that one? I would never do that. That means somebody's got to go up to the stat, hit the button for it to go to occupy. A conference room, maybe a room like this so we can get the cooling on, would be nice. I gotta get, see Andy's gonna watch us. So All right, so we're gonna say standard. Got it. <clears throat> Override duration. When you let somebody change the temperature, how long are you gonna let them change it for? You don't want him to sit there or them to sit there and change the temperature on a Saturday morning because they came into work and then they leave and it's there for the rest of the weekend. Right? <coughs> they say, you can come in Saturday, that's great, we love you, but you're only going to get four hours of heat. Does that make sense? Okay. Minimum heat recovery ramp rate. This is where you're going to have to go in and do your heat recovery. This is where adaptive intelligent recovery doesn't come in. You set up your own heat ramp and cool ramp. So you got to know the performance of the equipment. Because as we know, sometimes things are oversized, right? In the commercial market. Next, minimum cool. Again, you're setting up your ramp. Is it three degrees an hour, two degrees an hour? What can you make up an hour and then we're going to do your ramp? And that's how you get your adaptive intelligence recovery. You set it up. When you do residential, we got that nailed, you put it in, we got it taken care of. All right? Because you know those residential guys, they go, that's too tough. All right. Minimum cool. Watch this. This is where you get a divorce if you do this at your house. 
Go ahead. I dare you to let not let your wife go below 81 degrees in cooling. I dare you. A, the dinner's going to stink and your suitcases are going to be on the porch. All right? But I think you can see this in a commercial. I can put a temperature where they can't take it lower. And you give them a spread. All right? So let's go back here to you want to, you can let them take it all the way down to 50. Knock yourself out. Heat, same difference. Okay? Do you want to set in a 68 to 70, 71 heat set point that they can't raise the heat above? This is what you do. And that's good to have. Keypad lockout. Help me, Rhonda. Unlocked. The user has access to all thermostat settings. Partially locked. The user can modify temperatures only. So you got a high temp, low temp, and that's the only thing they can play with. They can't turn on the cool, they can't turn on the heat, they can't do any of that stuff. All I can do is that. No schedule changes. No schedule changes, nothing. They can raise and lower the temperature. This in the band that you told them they can. Uh, if you set the other two high and low. If you don't set those, they got the full wheel. But here's the other one. Fully locked. They can't do a damn thing. Now, if you have them on the internet and they have an account, you got a facility manager who has it locked out. The manager of the store or the restaurant or whatever calls and say, man, we need heat. And he goes in there and looks and says, hey, hey you're right. It's a little cool there today. He can override the set points from his iPad, Android, smartphone, or computer, even though he has it locked out. So you still have that facility guy that can still have the control. That's all do the access you put in, correct? That's all do the access you yes. put in. Yes. In other words, when you set up your account, so in other words, if Jerry here had these six stores in Indianapolis and you had them in New York, you could go in on the locked ones in New York and change the temperatures. And Jerry could do Indy, but you couldn't do New York because you're not set up for New York. And you couldn't do Indy. Fair enough? So you can set it up any way you want to. You can give it to the right deacon in the church so when the ladies are having their uh, quilting session and they're cold in the room, he can change the temperature for them. Okay? That's what that all means. So we're going to leave it unlocked. By the way, there is some place, <coughs> your security code to get into the setups is the date code. It is the date code. And there is a place in there where you can change that number. Under security, it says change your password. So if you don't like 1326, which is the date code, you can change it to 44444. Because you can remember that easy and you make all your thermostats 4444. And then all of a sudden, Jerry quits. And then you go to the job and it's 44444 and you don't know it's 44444. You put in a date code like you're supposed to and says, can I get in? What do you do? You buy a new thermostat. <laughs> <laughs> what you do is this. You take the number that Jerry put in there, 44444, right? And you add, no, excuse me, I did this wrong. You take the date code. I'm going to show you where to find it. 1326. I'll show you where to find it. You add 1, 2, 3, 4 to it. 10, 6, 5. Did I do my math right? 2. 2. 2. This is your new code to get in so that you can change Jerry's 4444 code. Okay? Date code and add 1, 2, you take your date code, and I'll show you where to find the date code. You have one, two, three, four to it. And that's how you can get in when somebody put a different password in. And they left the company. Not on good terms. So they're not going to tell you what the password was. The worst thing I ever saw in that was a guy who quit a company in Chicago. And he sent his keys in. He said, with a note that says, I quit the vans in Chicago Hair Parking Lot. It took a little while to find that man. I took the day code and the sheet metal above the stats 
on the units. I just wrote the date code. There you go. Nobody knows what they are. Well, no, what, I'm going to show you something here that you're going to love. Wired sensor on S terminal. You got one terminal on that sub base. If you look at it, it's an S1. Let's say yes. Wired remote indoor? No, I don't want to wire more. But I can. I could put an indoor sensor in here, wired, and I could do square root numbers, series, parallel, average, the whole nine yards. But I also say no here because I can do wireless. We're going to show you that wireless. We're going to say no. Wired discharge air sensor. We're going to say yes. Now I'm going to put a discharge air sensor on S1 there. It's a 10K, and I'm going to turn a temperature. If it's 45 degrees on your discharge, and you have uh, a 90 degree day out, you have a problem, don't you? There's a good chance there's ice in the coral, right? So what's going to happen here when this trips 45 down here, you can't see it, there's a little red light, it's going to start blinking, it says call your dealer. You have an alert. If you hook to the internet, everyone that signed up for the internet alert is going to get the alert, you got a problem. You got a 45 degree discharge. Now if somebody calls you and say, I got a bunch of ice on that black thing hanging on that silver thing out there in the back of the room. And you've been there, haven't you? Right? And you go, oh, well, when's the last time you changed your filters? I don't have any filters. Been there too, haven't you? Right? So what has happened is, yes sir? How do you get to 511? I don't have 511. Well, you had to, you had to tell it. I had to tell it I had a... Uh, Wired sensor. Wired yes, wire sensor, sensor, say yes. When it says yes. indoor sensor, say no. And then it says, uh, you got it now? You there? Wired then discharge. Yeah, wait a minute. You're going to say wired sensor for indoor, you say no. You're going to say next. Right. And then it should say discharge. Right. You say yes. And it's going to ask you for your, this is going to say 10K ohm. That's what it is. It's going to ask you this. Now, if somebody calls you and says they have ice on this black hose and that silver thing back in the bathroom by the water heater, right? And they say, I want you here in an hour. What do you tell them? Oh, no. Hell no. We'll be there in about four hours, right? Or, I got to have the ice belt, right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn off the air, right? Turn on the blower. And in about four hours, I'll be there. I can't work on it. When it hits 45, I turn off the air, I turn on the blower, I send a red alert here, and I send internet messages out. Is that good or bad? That's good. You know, they're calling you, you're calling them, yep, I got that alert. Go see if there's ice in the coil. Yeah, there's ice in the coil. Well, I can't do anything until it thaws. I got a guy scheduled in four hours to come by and see you. You're taking care of customers, haven't you? Plus they called you. What's that keyword? Called you? Isn't that what you want them to do? All right, 45, next. Here's your filter. You got a media up there. I say next. You can say I got one or two. Now here's what I don't, I wish they'd do this, and I've asked numerous times. I wish I could go next now and put the sizes of the filters. So when it came up, you knew you needed this and that, because yeah. there, there are just no building with the same size builders. I don't care who you are. I don't even remember mine. Yeah. <coughs> you could do that in your, in the beginning, do you have your different messages, could you? No. Hmm. You might. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. All right. Number of filters. Air filter reminder. You want to do it 10 runtime days. 30 runtime days. That's 24 Seven. hours a day times 30. That's how long the fan's got to run before the alert comes. Now, on this 20 and 12 degree days, that might be 45 days. But before, when it was nice and mild and hardly ran the fan, it might have been 90 days. Or, if you want to, you don't like that, you can go this way and say 12 calendar months. What do you want? I don't care. What kind of maintenance performance did you sell then? Does it fit in your schedule? Next, humidifier. Now watch this, I'm gonna say none, but I can put a humidifier there. Next, I can put a dehumidifier there. Next, or I can put a ventilator. 
Once I say I got a, let's say dehumidifier, okay? I got a whole house dehumidifier. It will not, no, it does. I guess I didn't, I gotta be able to do it. I only got one output. I'm not gonna be able to do this. I don't know why I'm being able to. Maybe I'm not done yet. Reminder off, 12 months. I got a full house dehumidifier. Oh, here you go. Once I say the dehumidifier's on U1, U1's gone. I only got one U1. I don't have a U2. I either can put a humidifier, I can put a dehumidifier, or I can put some ventilation system in. But not all three. But not all three. I got one U1. So there's my humidifier. I'm going to dehumidifier with a whole, you know, 15 gallon little dehumidifier. I'm going to say, do you want to do it in the heat mode? No. Do you want to do it in the cool mode? Yes. Do you want to do the humidifier? Yes, I got a whole house dehumidifier. Why wouldn't I dehumidify? I got humidity in the space. I want to get it out. What controls the fan, equipment, or the thermostat? You do your thing. Run the cooling, run the dehumidifier when the cooling's on. Yes or no? You do that. Dehumidify away. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a second. The other thing that you can do with dehumidification, you can do a low speed fan or a high speed fan and you can super cool up to three degrees. So you can have a whole house dehumidifier, separate by itself, or you can use the equipment and sub cool low speed fan, high speed fan. That's the whole reason I want that. Okay. Now, dehumidify away is for your building owners that go to Florida in the wintertime and come back home here in the summertime. Not only Florida, they go to Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Florida, South Carolina, Georgia. And they're down there in the wintertime, right? Everything's fine. But then they leave and button up their house. They don't rent it out. And what's the biggest problem down there in the summertime? Humidity. And of course, they take their set point for cooling because Florida electric is real high. And they raise it to 80 degrees. I don't want it 80 degrees. So what happens to the house? It gets humid. It gets musty. It gets mold. So what you can do with Humidify Away, you forget about the temperature set point, and you use a humidity set point to control the cooling so that you can subcool up to 9 degrees to get the humidity out to get the mold from growing. You can have a temperature limit. Yes. But it, humidity is in control. The humidity, because you got to set it any. It's not like the dehumidification on the previous model where dehumidification control was only lowering the, the cooling set point. When you exceeded the humidity set point, right? You might drop it to what, two or three. Well, degrees. let's do this. Let's, but we're going to go back here and we're going to say uh, low speed fan. Okay, now I'm going to dehumidify with low speed fan. I didn't check it there. Next, I'm going to put the low speed fan, I'm going to wire to U1 and normally close. What's my action or normally open? What do you want me to do? And then minimum on time, cooling droop. Cooling droop is how many degrees or minutes that you're going to let it run and sub cool the place. Okay? And you set that all up. Any questions on that? But you got a humidifier, a dehumidifier, or a ventilator. One of the three, can't have all three. If you want all three, you get the gray box. The gray box has a U1, U2, U3, and you can put them all on. All right? Okay, where am I? I got lost. You backed up from the... I know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say none. I don't care what you put on yours because it doesn't matter. Ventilation, now that I can have ventilation, I can say it. ERV, fresh air damper. ERV and HRV, rule of thumb, ERV only in Indiana. ERVs have a core in there that try to keep the hot, moist air out in the summertime and tries to keep the hot, moist air in the house that you paid to humidify in the house. If you go heat recovery, it doesn't care about anything. And if you got an 82% dew point outside, it's going to suck that air in and throw it at your coil, and you're going to have to get it out. Fair enough? That's, that's the problem you have. Okay. I'm going to say none. 
Okay, ventilator reminder, UV. You got a UV lamp, you can put that how many you got, and do you have a 24 month or do you have a 12 month that you have to change it? And again, red light comes on, emails go out, you need a new lamp. They're calling you. All right, custom reminders, press here. All right, this is your service reminders. You can do a service reminder what day you want to do it, the whole nine yards, but let's see what we got here. We got a service reminder, spring reminder, these are already preset. Fall reminder, warranty reminder, and if you want a custom reminder, you go here, do you want to, no, no, I want to press here, and now you can type in any message you want. Your dehumidifiers, five year warranty's up in 60 days, call me. This stack can be hooked to the internet, call me. And then what I tell the residential guys, they put the, uh, Equipment in in the middle of June, it was 90 degrees, and they didn't buy a humidifier. In January, a message would come up on my screen that says, house dry, skin itchy, need humidity. That magic word, what is it? Call me. You see what I'm doing? It's a billboard. What message do you want to put on there? Do you put specials on there? I don't know. It's yours, but that's how you do it. You can type away, and it's a pain. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you want to say? Do you want to, uh, what's what you guys got going here? You got it. You got with custom reminders. You scroll down till you hit the word. Uh, wait a second. Custom reminder. You say next. Uh, but you're supposed to hit that. Hit, you have to hit here. You have to hit here. Where it says here, you hit here. You hit and then you get to type. And let me tell you, typing is not that much fun. Let's see. Uh, it really is. I, I haven't yet figured out how to get my B's, C's, and D's. I really haven't. I got an A and a B there. But, oh, wait a second. Let's see here. God, don't. No, 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 no. Oh, so many words. <laughs> Yeah. So if you're good Scrabble, you know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. The up and down arrows. Up and down arrow gives me the go, D's, E's, and F's. Go up. Oh, okay. I see what I did. Oh, I see. Okay. There's C, D. Give me a break. Oh, like those are capital. And those are caps. And if you want, oh, I, there, we all learned something today. These is lower, so. D, e, next, C, next. Good luck with that one. That'll take you forever. And this is how you do your dealer information. Hello. You're going to go on that website and type it all in and download it, or are you going to stand here and type like this? Give me a break. I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. What did I do? Does it come off? Load up the SIT card back. What the hell did I do here? Oh, I'm in the wrong place. I said installer setup. Save to SID card. No. Load from SID card. No, I gotta get out of here. I I'm sorry I hit the wrong button. Everybody hang loose, I'll get there. Installer options. I'll be there in a second. Because I know oh, whoop, select. Next, 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 next. Because I saved it. I said, yeah, I want to get out of there. We were doing uh, messages, weren't we? Yeah, four, yeah, four hundred. Yeah. Custom reminders. There you go. Okay, next, after the custom reminders, is backlit. Some people use this for a nightlight. They love it. And other people say, that light is so bright, it keeps me up all night. Right? Never had that one, have you? You know what I tell those people? Have you ever heard of Woodford Reserve? Maybe you need another shot. You know? yeah, man. Go to bed, sleep a little sadder. But what you do is you put on demand, the only time the light comes on is when they touch the screen. If they want a night light, you have it on continuous, okay? It's up to you. Next one is you want military or civilian time? You want daily. Welcome to Daylight Savings Time. Isn't it fun? You've been on it for how many years now? Three, two. 
Not too long. It's Al from Evansville. I used to have to figure out every six months where the hell were your time. Six months you're on my time, six months you weren't. Now you're never on my time. All right, next. Your thermostat says it's 71. My little thermostat says it's 70. Okay, how's that? Now this gentleman over here used to have a pair of needle nose pliers. And every time he went to a mercury bulb thermostat, he said, what temperature you want? Bend it over. Right or wrong? I know he did. <laughs> now we do the opposite here. He never did that. Oh, yeah. I just, you pull it down with a red mark what you want it to be. Yeah. Push it up. Yeah. They but, do, they and of course, they got this thermometer that they got from the insurance company on this little cardboard yeah. calendar that they're telling you your. They've got the weights and measures of the United States of America, and we're on a factory with the computers. You're wrong. Yes. See, so you just pull the bulb up or down this until line is the number. So here's your humidity set point, and then why you would turn off the alert light so they don't get the alerts in front of you and say, "Call me." You, you figure that out. I don't know. Okay. And we're saying next. Hear it. Ready. Go ahead. You want to upload from the computer or do you want to sit and type your date? Yeah, I know what you're going to do. All right. Okay, next. And that, we're talking four lines there. 40 each. There's your message. Done. And then you're done. Do you want to set up? Yes. You want to save changes? Yes. When you're done there, put that thermostat on that little white sub base. We're going to show you some more things about that thermostat. And you should have voltage and everything there that you need. Now, what I want you to do under training, hands on, exercise. Okay. Uh, nope, 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 here I am. It's very simple. It's a one heat, one cool. On this side of the board, I want you to hook up a wire between Y1 and Y1, W1 and W1, G and G, and R and R. It's that simple. The blue wires are in that box. Installer options. 
After you get installer options, say select, put in your date code. 13 points. You there? Yeah, we, we got it. So it's giving me a fault, like we're S1. Okay, but it still should be able to get here. Yeah, menu. Where's the equipment? Where's the equipment? Select. What? Use what? Cancel. I, I hit the wrong thing. Cancel. I, I didn't schedule this. I don't know. Equipment status. You see equipment there, just say select, scroll down, keep going, all the way down to the bottom. There's your date code. That's it done. I go all the way to the bottom. Installer setup. Options. Put your date code in. We got your date code in. We're good to go. Okay, once you get your date code in, you're done. And you got, look what you got here. You got installer setup. You got installer tests. You got data logs. You got the wireless manager. Most important thing is reset the defaults. Device information. But let's do this. The worst thing on any job is when you're done and three months later you get a call back and it don't work. And then you say, gee, we put that in the middle of June. Did anybody check to see if the gas cop was open? It's amazing how many people relate to what I say, right? So here's where you go, installer test, say select, hit select, and now we're going to say cool stages, say select, and make the zero a one. And then you should get a bunch of lights on. That is nice, isn't it? You know it's wired right. If you had two stages, you'd be able to bring on both stages. You know the cooling is working. All right, we're going to get out of there. Go to zero, say back, go to the fan, say select, say on, and you should have another light come on. If it's wired right, the fan's coming on. You see how you're going to prevent callbacks? Because what we know about callbacks, you don't make money on callbacks. So you want to make sure this thing is running and everything's running before you leave. So we're going to turn it off. Save that and let's go to heating stages. Say select, hit one, and now he has both his lights come on, so he has his thermostat controlling the fan. If somebody said equipment, you're waiting for your fan and limit to warm up before the fan comes on and you're like, we'll be on. And he already said cool, he likes it. I know I made a friend over there, right? Really? It really is slick. And my discharge is 69. I don't know what that's all about. You guys shouldn't get it. I'm not getting it. That's because you didn't have any on there. Okay. Now we're going to go back to, um, what can I do? Back, back, back. Go back, back, back. Can't get back? No, I didn't come too far. I'm on one. Okay, so I want you to go back to uh, home and then go back to menu and go back in installer options and go back into your date code and get to the screen. For those of you who have data logs, I have an alert log that you can go in there. Some of you might have alerts in there and it'll give you all the alerts. If you take the zip drive, go underneath and download 250 line items on an Excel spreadsheet. I will tell you every alert. 250 of them. This, this saved me a lot of money. This got me a customer. I was checking the system out first time, and I went to the alert logs. I'm sitting here on the computer going, Man, we got a problem. I said, what's the problem? I said, look, we lose electricity every day. It's only a blip, but we're losing electricity. We got to have a short wire. There's something wrong here. I got to find out what's the problem. The manager of the store said, we don't have a problem. The facility manager from Indianapolis looked over me and said, what do you mean we don't have a problem? Oh, we lose electricity every day here at the store. No problem. <laughs> they don't lose it anymore because the facility manager called the electric company, the problem solved. But I made a real good friend because I was able to show him, well, you got a problem here, buddy. It's not Honeywell related because we showed him where the problem was. He likes it. 
The next thing we have is interactive log. I don't ever touch the thermostat. Well, if you never touch the thermostat, who changed it at 12.02 yesterday and took it down two degrees? Right? Well, it wasn't me. Well, you're the only one here. You can't be that way. Right? So there's your interactive logs. Now, if you get to the prestige, the prestige now has a thing called a performance log. This is where the prestige differs from the Vision Pro Ridley. The prestige has a performance log, and now you can see exactly how many run hours you have on every stage. You can tell how many run hours the fan is run. So if you do maintenance on run hours, here's where you can find out your run hours. Okay? The Prestige also has a discharge sensor and a return air sensor. And you can set up change in delta T. You cannot do it on the thermostat you're playing with, only the Prestige. Change in delta T. So if you set up, it's got this much change and this so many minutes, and let me know within five cycles if it doesn't do this five straight cycles, okay? <clears throat> so if you have a heat pump with strip heat, it craps out tomorrow, when does the building owner or the homeowner know he's on strip heat? It's the utility bill. You got it, when he gets the utility bill. If you had a prestige, which is about 25 bucks more than the stats you're playing with, right? It would tell you within five cycles, your compressor's crapped out, alerts are going, emails are going, and you're knowing within a day, I gotta get a guy out there, you're on strip heat. And by the way, my service call is gonna be cheaper than that strip heat bill. Right? Is that good or bad? It is good. The Prestige says that. Only the Prestige. Okay, so there's your logs. Now we're going to set this up for a heat pump next. So what I want you to do, go back. There's your wireless manager we'll talk about in a second. See that reset to defaults? Everybody got that? Select that. Yeah, there you go. Select reset to defaults and say yes. You have just wiped off everything you programmed in that thermostat and you are back to where you got it out of the box. How about that? So if you go to a job and don't know what the heck is not running right, you want to get it all back to where you want it, that's when you go back to factory resets. Everybody back to factory resets, everybody should have, watch this, here's the page you should have. I'm gonna, You should have, let me get there. Where am I, where am I, where right here, right here. I'm teaching this class too much, boom. You have that right there, everybody have that? That's where you are. You're back to zero, just like you took it out of the box. Okay. So those are three key sites you should know about. Your data logs, we set the factory defaults. We're also going to go in there in a second and go to the wireless manager because we didn't have any wireless stuff in there. But that's where you go to the wireless manager and say, okay, I see this. All right. Now, I'm going to try this because I got you out of some place I didn't want you to get out of. Uh, well, how am I going to do this? Okay, everybody just kind of blow through here until you get to a point where you can say done and get back to, you want to exit the installer setup and get back to this screen right here. I want to see if we can do this. Okay, get back to this screen. If you have a problem, let me know, I'll get you there. Yeah, pardon me? Yeah. Okay, now watch this. Well, there's no, here, let me see, I want to do something else. A different one Yeah, that's what I thought. Next, done, done, okay. okay, you're where I want you. you. Are you at that screen right there? You're at that screen over here, everybody? Yeah. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to put a jumper wire between C and 24C. A little wire there, you ready? 24 volts to the thermostat. The thermostat has to be at the sub base to do this because it has to see the 24 volts. 
It has to be antiseptics. You now have 24 bullets to the thermostat. You now hit menu. All right, we're going to go to menu. We're going to go all the way down to installer options. We're going to say select, put your day code in. And once you put your date code in, I want you to scroll down until you see wireless manager. Installer setup, installer options, whatever they call it. <coughs> put in your date codes. Uh, you got to get out of there. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Say yes, you want to say down. No, okay, so what do you got? Sit down. Sit down. This is, do you want to exit? Yes, I want to exit. I go back to home. I go to menu. Now scroll down. Now go to wireless manager. Click on wireless manager. Good. It does. Right under. It's right before reset and right under data logs. You should be wireless manager. <coughs> Add devices, connected devices. You have nothing connected, but if you went there right now, you went on a job and say, what the heck's on this thing, and you say connected, you will see if you have an outdoor sensor. You will see if you have an indoor sensor. You will see if you have a gateway hooked to this. You'll know what's there, okay? If you want to uh, replace a thermos, uh, indoor sensor, an outdoor sensor, Here's where you can remove it, and it'll list outdoor sensor. You can say, remove outdoor sensor. And then you can put a new one in for whatever reason, okay? Now, in animal black box or are outdoor sensors. Go ahead and get your outdoor sensor. I'm going to get you there. Go to, and I want you to go to add a device, but we will do this one at a time. There we go. Select, take code. Take code. Get your outdoor sensor. Indoor. There you go. Now you will notice that you have lithium batteries in your bag. You put lithium batteries in the outdoor sensor, not less the lady at the house or the office is a fox. And then you put normal batteries in it so you can see her every four months. But if you put lithium batteries, she's ugly, you put lithium batteries in there, and you get to see her every three to four years. Any questions on what batteries you put in the outdoor sensor? Olivia. Or you will be there every four months. I will guarantee you, you'll be there every four months. I have lithium in mine at the house, and I am every, what's three years I haven't seen them yet. But they come in the package. Though. They come in the package with the thing. All right, now leave it open. Go, go close it up, leave it open. All right, let's do you first. I want you to say add a device. Okay, what's it ask you next? Some devices now. Okay, did you say add a device? What do you got? Add a device? Say select. I got press got? connect. Just a second, don't do anything. What's it say? <laughs> See, someone pushed the button before he was supposed to, so you can't do it because you're wise. There's a gentleman. I didn't know I didn't push nothing. Who pushed the button ahead of the game? Huh? You got to do it one at a time. You cannot all try to do it at one time. 